When Dave Reedy was looking for inspiration for a fresh new idea to help kickstart his fledgling software company called Microsphere, he looked no further than his wife's experiences as a primary school teacher to create not one, but two games set in a classroom environment. These games were, of course, the ZX Spectrum Classics School Days and arguably its better successor, Back to School. Along with a family friend that was hired to do the graphics, Microsphere's entries into the school genre were never sadly bettered by them or any other publishing house for that matter. Using the engine to create a similar style as detective game called Contact Sam Cruise, Microsphere did very little else afterwards, which they mainly put down to stiff competition from bigger publishing houses with better distribution and also rife software piracy that ironically happened in playgrounds up and down the country. Perhaps software publishers thought that the last thing kids wanted to do after school is play a game set in school, but surely the success of both school days and back to school showed that obviously wasn't the case. Features such as changing the names of the pupils and teaching staff made the games even more immersive as you starred in your own version of these games battling against the very teachers and kids who gave you a bad time that day. You could kiss your girlfriend, punch the school bully, shoot catapults off the kids' heads, skip classes, and even write rude words on the blackboard. It was all genius, but it was never repeated. Or was it? Well, I've tried to track down some of the other offerings you had back then if you wanted to experience more games featured in school or around it, and I'm gonna count them down to find the best alternatives to these classics, which we all know are the supreme champions at the classroom genre. I'm not looking at text adventures as although there were a few set in a school environment, we want something like the Microsphere offerings, something with a graphical interpretation of the school experience. Now, to say I struggle to find any games, let alone some good ones, is an understatement. I scoured all the Spectrum database backed websites for keywords, searched the contents of magazine collections on the internet archive, asked friends in Discord, and asked for help in popular Spectrum Facebook groups. A few titles were mentioned that featured a school at some point in the game, but nothing that was very much embedded into the school genre. Some games, like Blinky's Scary School, seen here for example, give it the large one about being a school game to actually be set in some castle or some shit like that. So pickings are so slim that there are a couple of games here not actually set in the school, but are close enough or get in by merit alone. But we'll come to that in a bit. Right after, we experience the worst of these offerings at number seven. Menace. Nineteen eighty three was pretty early on in the Spectrum's life, and boy does it show here. A sixteen K game set in a classroom where somehow you've got to get the pink boy in trouble and or harass the teacher with various tools on offer. This is all rather redundant though as hitting any other child loses a life, which you'll soon discover fairly early on, is seemingly impossible to avoid. Originally released by uh, Fashionsoft and then re-released by Firebird, it was a tad early to be reviewed by the main magazines, but was held accountable by Home Computer Weekly, who actually flipping liked it. Although they did agree that it required a certain amount of skill to progress. I guess the bar was set pretty low in 1983, with games like Manic Miner being the very cream of the crop at this point. So it's easy to be dismissive now, but yeah. If this wasn't considered crap back then, it certainly is some 40 odd years later. The controls are way too sensitive and your fellow classmates move at too much of a pace to make anything remotely playable. Having A and Z as left and right controls didn't do much to help the difficulty rating even more so. It's bloody awful. Feature is definitely one of those early games that you picked up from the shelf in WH Smiths, read the details, looked at the artwork and thought, yes, this is a bit of me, only to get home and realise it really isn't. Released at the same time as School Days and having a similar school rated front cover are the two things this game actually has in common with uh, school. Apparently you are a pupil of Quange or Quange Hill. Yep. 
in some alien planet school that you must try and escape from by finding the keys and the exits. It's a basic game at best quite honestly and even by 1984 looks massively outdated, especially compared to something like School Days which feels decades apart from this. It has sound at least and moves pretty quickly, albeit too quickly at times, with varying degrees of speed being altered in the level choice in the somewhat basic menu. The addition of a weapon makes things a little easier, but it soon becomes apparent this has much to do with school as um, to playing video games. The only game written for the Spectrum by a chap going by the name of Tuba Zaidi. Tuba Ruba is the nickname of the naughty score kid in the game who must collect 50 quid lying around the school to pay for a broken window at the headmaster's request. So sure that Tuba will fail in the task, the headmaster has even bet his Ferrari on him failing. It's a nice premise, but that's as far as this jet set willy on steroids wannabe goes. Firstly, it seems we must accept that the school is rife with strange moving objects that often kill you if you so much as look at them, but also what better way to wander around the school than with a jetpack, allowing you to zoom around and ultimately straight into the path of something that kills you. You also have a gun, which is super handy, and yeah, the school theme that made this game slightly interesting has all but vanished. It's just another cheap platformer that has no real reference to its source material and is not particularly nice to play either. When you do die, there is a strange animation that takes you to the center of the screen. And after 20 minutes, I see why the headmaster was so cocksure his Ferrari was safe. Probably the highlight of the game is Tuba's little comment to the hackers in the intro screen. Bless him. Ah yes, this was a proper stretch on two fronts. Firstly, it's hardly based in a school, rather in the surrounding area of one. And secondly, it's almost a text adventure. Almost. There is a pretty decent menu system and characters control and some pretty scary digitized pictures to admire. Admiration continues for the quickest death in a game since trying to get dizzy to swim. Are you ready? Go. Yeah, so don't return home without your confiscated Walkman, which you must break into school and retrieve. Aiding you in this quest is your mate Hollow. I say aiding, but he really is just a f***ing hindrance, who is required at times, but often refuses requests to follow you. He even manages to walk where the hell he likes, as seen in this walkthrough video of some actual school-based footage, because quite frankly, I don't have it in me to get that far. In fact, I suggest you all go and watch the walkthrough linked in the description. Watch at two times speed just to witness how ridiculously pathetic this game is and how ridiculously ridiculous it is to complete. With stupid jumps, bizarre puzzles, stupid side characters and bang average graphics, you would assume the magazines hated it. Well, no, not really. Reviewed in the text adventure section of Crash Magazine, it scored a commendable 70%. Sinclair users Graham Taylor went as far to say that the game was like a mix of Spellbound, The Hobbit and School Days. Uh, I'm sorry, what now Graham? To think this retailed for $9.95 on release still blows my mind. With this license, Argos could have done something really pretty special. Kids in the 80s absolutely adored Grange Hill as the peak of after school viewing. This falls well short of that and even a Blue Peter game might have been better received than this. Yep, this is another dubious entry, but as 50% of the locations on offer are the school and what I think is the school hall for the dance, it deserves to be in the list, just. 
Using the main premise of the movie in which you must convince your parents to fall in love, whether you are successful at this or not is depicted by a picture of you on the left hand side. If it starts to disappear, you are failing. If parts of the image are appearing, then you've got your parents together. Each time it fully appears, the family photograph on the right will gain extra sections. Complete all those sections and the game is yours. All sounds fairly straightforward and there's even items scattered about that can help your parents together, but straightforward it really isn't. I'll tell you what else it isn't, and that's fun. Plodding around with your mum following you like a lost puppy is irritating at best. The character sprites are dreadful. Biff looks more like a character from the Goonies than the actual Biff and the backdrop and locations are sparse to say the least. All the locations of the game can be seen in under two minutes and then it's just a case of wandering around in the hope that you might get your parents to stand close enough to each other for long enough to regenerate the photograph. I suppose that the movie plot is at least attempted in this license but the execution of it lives up to a majority of movie times in the 8-bit era. Dreadful. Crash gave it 42% which is probably too high in all honesty, although weirdly, I do remember enjoying this game when I was younger, but I can't fathom how. I presume my imagination played a big part in filling the massive gaps that the game leaves. So someone has nicked the headmaster's wallet or the knobhead has just gone and lost it. With your reputation around the school, you are prime suspect number one, so you must find said wallet and return it before you are kicked out of school. To do so, you must figure out several puzzles that involve multiple items that are scattered around the school. Being only able to carry two items at once, you will ultimately drop the second to last item you pick up when walking over a new one, in a poor man's um, dizzy type way, although this reminds me massively of the Wally series, but again, not in a positive way. This is Budget Personified that cleverly uses the school theme as a hook into buying the game and taking a punt for a mere two quid. I think even for a couple of quid though, you would have been ultimately disappointed here. Really bad color clash, bad jumps and platform mechanics aside, there is so much more just to piss you off. Items can sometimes seem unreachable and some enemies hit you as hard as you hit a room, meaning you lose precious energy before you know it. It's all just really a bit crap. And at number one, we finally have something flipping brilliant. An arcade conversion of the wonderfully weird school-based game named simply after our hero in question, Mikey. Ocean finally managed to secure the licensing right to Konami games following Konami's failed attempt at doing it for themselves in the UK market. Releasing a string of Konami arcade games under their newly acquired Imagine label, they turned to Jonathan Joffa Smith for the conversion to the spectrum of this classic. Interestingly, the original arcade version featured headbutts rather than shouts used in the home ports and in Japan was moved to an office location due to being released during a time where school violence was very much a news item. Thus Mikey was changed to a loosely translated freshman employee Turu, with Turu being the surname of Mikey I think. On the spectrum we got very lucky with a near perfect port of the international release. Everything from the arcade is here and hugely playable also. The Beatles' Hard Day's Night blasts out from the menu and the slick look of everything continues throughout. I played this game for hours when I was younger and even thought the, what I thought was naked, ladies that appeared in the doorways at the time were really quite rude. The premise is fairly simple but also fairly odd in trying to get a love letter to your girlfriend by uh, collecting hearts around the school. From collecting them by bumping classmates off their chairs whilst avoiding your teacher's false teeth Yep, to searching lockers, avoiding cheerleaders and school cooks in the canteen, it's all here and it's all superbly done. The fact the game looks simple to play but does not mean it was simple to develop. 
In an interview in 2009, a year before he sadly passed away, Joffa remarked, the graphics routine in Mikey are probably the most complicated things I have done. A simple game that looks so simple, headache, and no one sees any of it, brilliant. Disassemble that bastard for a laugh. I don't think I could do it again. So there we have it. Nothing certainly compares to the brilliance of school days or back to school, but at least in an arcade styling, Mikey came close to the sheer brilliance set in a school. As for the rest, yeah. Download them, have a play, see what you think. But I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, text adventures aside, there are only three decent school games for the Specky. Which is a shame, but blimey, what a trio. School was a mixed bag for me, but escaping the reality of it with games that took me to a fantasy version of it are just some of the reasons these old video games will always have a special place in my heart. Thanks for watching.